Hi, and welcome to another episode of All Around Azure. I'll be your go your he- <laughs> your host today. My name is Jason Hand. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jason Hand. And uh, really excited for today's episode. Got uh, one of my good friends and colleagues, colleagues uh, Cassie, who's going to be talking to us um, about NoSQL for relational thinkers, a little bit of uh, Cosmos DB, and uh, some other neat stuff. We're going to be going through a learn module a little bit, and... Um, all kinds of cool stuff. So without further ado, let's introduce Cassie. Everybody say hello to Cassie. Hi, Cassie. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. How are you? Good. Awesome. Well, thanks for being on the show. I've been looking forward to this all week. Um, we've been having a couple different discussions about what we're going to talk about and uh, taking a few trips down memory lane. What, uh, what, uh, what are we going to talk about? What are, what are you going to show us off today? Yeah, so we're going to talk about NoSQL and Cosmos DB, like you were saying, and um, I come from a .NET background and obviously do a lot of SQL there and relational databases and, and thinking about all of that. Uh, but then obviously NoSQL is beginning more and more popular. So lately I've been kind of like, I want to learn a little bit more of that. So um, I've learned a little bit, but I'm still very much like kind of learning. So I thought we could go through this learn module and kind of learn more together. Yeah. With the dogs. With the dogs. <laughs> He's growling at something. I don't know. What. Yeah, yeah these, uh, so yeah, we've talked about how fun some of these learn modules are. And, and I think this is a great idea, um, kind of stepping through, give people an idea on, you know, what they're all about. Um, some of them are, are a little bit more on the technical side, which I would say the one that we're going to go through probably falls more in line with that. Others are a little bit more of an overview. Um, but in general, they've been fantastic uh, to go through and, and uh, play around with. So. Yeah, What's uh, exactly. so you tell us a little bit more about the learn module that you've already kind of looked at that we're gonna go through. Yeah, so basically it's like it's an introduction to um, NoSQL and the CLIs that we have to use with the Cosmos DB. Um, so you use Visual Studio Code and uh, there's the Azure plugin, and so you can actually create your Cosmos DB right in, in uh, Visual Studio Code. And if you're not familiar with Visual Studio Code it's a really lightweight IDE. So like coming from C-sharp, I use Visual Studio like all the time. And then VS Code came out and I'm like, that's cool. But then I didn't I didn't really think about it for a while. Mm-hmm. And now like the more I use it, the more I love it because it is just so lightweight. And I use, I still use uh, v- Visual Studio like probably more for C-sharp, but if you're doing like for JavaScript and Python and with this, mo- this module, we're going to be using VS Code still, even though we're going to be doing With all uh, the C-sharp. extensions, it's such a like, powerful little tool you know it's like very stripped down if you just download it and and fire it up there's not much to it but it's already super cool um and fast and then you start adding all these extensions in and yeah i've been a con i've converted myself um yeah cool for sure well i'm gonna switch over to your screen and you can start showing us a little bit uh about the things we're gonna talk about today awesome let's go to this one instead get i don't know why this chat isn't showing over here for me uh, speaking go. of chat, I, w- I will say also to those on uh, on the stream, um, please, if you've got any questions, just drop them into chat. I'll be keeping an eye on that uh, for Cassie. And uh, if there's any links that we want to share with you, Cassie will be sharing those with me, and I'll, I'll drop those into chat too. So uh, by all means, um, ask us any questions. We'll stop and try to answer them. Back or to Google you, Cassie. them together, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the fun of these shows is we're just kind of, we're not really winging it because there's been quite a bit of preparation, but you just don't know how it's all going to work out. Yeah, definitely. The fun of of live. (laughs) Yes. Um, Cool. So like one of the things that I do when I start to like learn about something new is I go to docs, right? Because Mm -hmm. there's, there's so much information there. So between like the learn module and docs, um, that's kind of where I started with this. And then I, sometimes I like to think of a problem I want to solve too. Um, and then see like how to start solving that and how to do that. How, like how would my data look in a NoSQL database versus a relational database, right? Um, and it turns out pretty different, <laughs> which we'll see as we go. Um, if you, how many people on here have done NoSQL? If you want to say so in the chat and like, or how many people have are used to like relational databases. You don't have to say if you don't want to, but I'm curious if if there's anyone there that's like new to it kind of like I was. Hmm. Okay. We're shy so far. That's okay. I'll keep an eye. <laughs> okay. 
Um, Okay, so high throughput. These are some of the things of like this this particular doc goes through like when you're thinking about um, SQL and relational versus no SQL. And like uh, this is obviously when you have your ID that goes to your order details and you join the tables together and then that's how you get that relationship, right? Hence the relation database. But with like no SQL, it's JSON and it's net just nested as a single document. Um, and so that's like one of the first things you have to think about is that it's you don't just like throw out the idea of like the columns and tables and and relationships because that's like for me when I started thinking this I was still trying to model my data like a relational database and so I was still putting like you know primary keys and um, <laughs> what's the other key I'm forgetting you know the other primary secondary, secondary key secondary key is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. See, you gotta think I back. This is it. how we started talking about this, and it led us back to, oh my gosh, do you remember using Access and like <laughs> writing entire solutions that held up like one big part of a business on this like janky Access yes. digital basic yes. monstrosity? My <laughs> first, my first real database that I created was in Access, and then never again. But. <laughs> Uh, but we yeah, wouldn't be also, here if it, weren't, if it wasn't for access, though. I know that. Right? And it gave you, and I think it still does, it gives you like this graphical UI. So for like, as we're calling them, the citizen developers, totally. you can go in and like think about it. Like, honestly, I was thinking about like Excel um, when I first start, made my first database in access. And then you can just like drag and drop your, your um, objects and mm -hmm. like, yeah. So now I don't really want to use it ever. But at the time, and for citizen developers, like, it's a cool tool. And so that was like how, and it's kind of like, a, I tend to talk about like gateway development sometimes, things that like get you started and get you thinking. And so I think that it's kind of a cool gateway thing, but it is still very useful. No hate on access. Um, oh, no, but yeah, no. so, and I, I really love databases. I do a lot with data with AI stuff as well. So like I focus actually more on AI now than I do on, you know, .NET development. So that was another thing that I thought would be fun talking about this because I don't get, I need an excuse to play with some data databases. Okay, so let's look through here. So that's kind of the one thing is like throw out the tables and the data types and all of that. Just throw it all out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real quick, Cassie, so I can share this link with everybody. Will you drop into our chat your alias so I can build a link uh, for everybody? Yeah, my like... Just the one we use Microsoft for, one, for right? the links. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it is Cassie B, and it is because I love Cardi B, to be honest. <laughs> that is literally why. <laughs> so the other thing that when I started thinking about, like, uh, do, we, do we have a little minute to talk about Cardi B? Because we can if you want. <laughs> I, I'm down. I'm totally down for that. Lay it on, lay Are on you a fan? Yeah. Well, I'm not so much. I mean, I, I like it. Yeah. I, I just don't, don't ask me what songs or like any song titles. But yeah, <laughs> what I've heard I liked. Yeah, me too. I think she's <laughs> fun. Okay. So Back then the other thing that when I started thinking about NoSQL is I only actually was thinking about like uh, document DB. Um, for in like I when I started going into this and like there are all these different like kinds of document DBs and with Cosmos DB you can actually choose which one you want like Cosmos isn't only document DB which was another like learning that I had as I started kind of reading through this doc is um, there's graph and there's key value um, so you can use gremlin graph within it and then you can have the SQL core API so the thing that I liked about this and is like oh I can still query it kind of the same way, like all that, the times learning SQL and, you know, joins and all of that, like you can still kind of like use that comfortably, but there's a lot of new things that are added and features. Um, and then obviously there's the fluid schema. So like, you're not statically defining your columns with like, with relational databases when you're, you know, figuring out what you need or somebody needs a column added or, uh, you know, the, the data type is wrong and you get an error, you know, you don't have to even like think about any of that, which is, so that part's kind of cool, kind of scary. At first I was like, that sounds dangerous. But, and, and that's the other thing is like, that I learned as I was going through is it's not always the right solution. Like no SQL isn't always the right solution. It depends on what you're building and what you need. It did um, feel like the, the wild, wild west for me. I was like, how does this work? Yes. Like, is this yes. okay? I don't know if this feels right. I can just put anything there? Like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm generally okay just accepting that technology has surpassed my ability to understand it and 
just go with it. But sir, this one was actually, I don't know. I, it felt like magic yeah. or I it was does. breaking the rules. It's breaking the rules because it's like, there are no rules. I mean, you have to have a partition key. Um, and that's like it. So, yeah. So like this particular order could have no order details. Like it might just be the order and then another one would have order details. And then it, this one, maybe it had an additional property. And so yeah. the thing that's like cool about that, when I think about it is you think about how like databases grow and you have these different, um, you, you know, properties and, and you have to like backfill information if you want to have a required field or like, you know, there's always, there's a lot of like work maintaining right. a relational database. And like, it seems like all of that work, goes away in yes. this. You can go work on other <laughs> things. Yeah. Yeah. What was the thing that you said to me? You're like, um, it gives the power back to like the developer or something. Yeah. It gives, puts the, puts the power of creating and, and managing some of the, da the database stuff now um, in teams that, you know, have a little bit of both where they have people who strictly work on DBA type of things. And so those who strictly work on devs mm -hmm. kind of converging a little bit there. It is. But not in, a, not in like a, a way that's uncomfortable, you know, because this is JSON, like a lot of its things we're already working yep. with. Definitely, it and is. Because and everything's it's... now, because it's all text, you know, it's all it's just like code, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I think that part of it makes it feel like um, less scary too, because it's not like you're still using SQL queries, you most likely used JSON, I would assume, unless you're a DBA and you really just live in the database. Um, mm -hmm. Even then, I feel like at some point you would have had to use it. Right. So yeah, using some of these very uh, common things. Okay, so that was kind of the first doc I looked at and it was like, okay, this is kind of making sense. Um, mm -hmm. And then, is this the same one? Choosing the right data store. Okay. So my dog, I don't know if you can hear the door, but <laughs> there's two doors to my office and uh, one of them's closed and one of them's open. And my dog walked in the other one and is now stuck because she's trying to get out the other door. And <laughs> she doesn't realize that she can just use the other door again. So you might hear her whine a little That's bit. Fine. Hopefully That's she fine. figures it out. Bring her over. That or I might have to go open the door for her. <laughs> <laughs> this is not out of the question that my cat won't make a surprise visit to my lap during this. <laughs> So, and she's still standing. Okay, I'll just, one second. My okay, dog. go for it. Okay, I, I opened the door so she's so, no longer trapped, but then I figured <laughs> since she caused this, she needs to come say hi. Uh, let's switch back. What's her oh. name? This is Sophie. Sophie. She's a single door dog. She can't figure out the two door thing, so... <laughs> Well, Sophie, we're all struggling lately. <laughs> all right. She had a constraint. Ha! <laughs> and make some data jokes, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Is that like a two-factor okay. joke, too? <laughs> all right. She's now free. The doors are open. Okay. So <laughs> uh, choosing the right data store. Oh, we kind of talked about that, like, when you're starting to design an application, like what should you use? And so I kind of was looking through here and thinking about, you know, how you would decide which one. So we'll paste, or Jason will give you um, these these links as well. So you can kind of read through it and think about it. But I have not played with graph databases yet. And I feel like that's something I need to play with at some point too. Have you played with graph databases at all? Um, no, not a whole lot. I've, um, I started, in, no. The, what's the uh what was the first one that came out the first graph one yeah um graph well is it, i know I'm there's graph, graph ql QL. yeah graph yeah, ql is kind of, yeah that's the one i would i don't know if it's is that a graph database that's kind of the first one i remember thinking oh what's i thought it was like a way to query but let's look it up because mm. like i don't even know okay maybe yeah I'm data query totally and manipulation right, language right. so yeah. now played with microsoft graph that's super cool. Yeah. Um, for those uh, pointing out in chat that my audio is only on the left channel, 
Uh, I've discovered that as well. And I think it's due to the fact that I rearranged my whole office and I don't have all my audio stuff. Should be like plugged into this board coming into mm -hmm. a single feed. So unfortunately, um, it's probably just going to have to be that way for this for this recording. So sorry for those who are listening through headphones and you only hear me in your left left ear. That's interesting. Thank You're you coming through both mine. I noticed Although, it when I was when I did a tech check earlier, and I and I just did a quick recording and went back and listened to it. So you probably, you, you know, I thought it, it could have been just on my end. It might be a little easier to notice in the headphones. Hmm. But uh, it's good on mine. Okay. But I'm, mine's also going through a preamp, and so maybe it's splitting it. That could be. Well, apologies to those who who have to put up put up up with the the left side, but uh, we'll get it fixed for the next one. And thank you for pointing it out. <laughs> um, cool. So yeah, that's just another way um, to think or to think about when you're going to go create a database. Just because we're going to play with Cosmos DB and um, the document uh, DB with the SQL API, it's just kind of what we want to play with today. But d sometimes people get like very like, there's only one true way to store your <laughs> data or like one true language. And you know what? It's all good. Uh, that's what we should have done. We should have had a DBA on. Maybe we can do that next time. That would be really fun. I would love to hear um, a DBA's uh, perspective and, yeah. and expertise. Yeah. Well, we already so, know we're going to do another one of these. Next time, it's going to be more music focused, which I'm already looking forward to. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited so, to continue working on that one. Yeah, but you know, we'll have lots of opportunities for these, so we'll come back. Keep cool. the keep the yeah. ideas stored somewhere. Maybe we'll use some Cardi B music when we do our data uh, processing. Well, you'd have to probably sing it and change the lyrics a little bit. There's clean versions. We find <laughs> yeah, but it might break copyright. Uh, oh, so that's right. So you have to do parodies. We'd get, we'd get muted. It's true. That's okay, though. Good point. We still have, uh, yeah, DMCA would go for us, um, but... The uh, it would still be. I wonder if the captions would still be there. I guess if people just wanted to rock along to their own Cardi B while you're yeah. while they're reading your reading your captions. Well, and I wonder what it would be. Um, so like we'd be doing like data visualization because it's it'll be AI, and so we'll be doing like how you can process and like view your like wave um form and like your spectrogram, and so like I feel like you could grab one and visualize it without. I think it's like as long as you don't play it, then it would mm -hmm, be fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe. So we could um, maybe do some like classification or something with yeah. Cardi B music. I don't know. We'll okay. see. Okay. Well, we'll figure that we'll out. What... Uh, back, to yeah. da back to databases. Yes. Back to databases. Sorry. <laughs> if you start talking about music, like I could just go on. <laughs> we'll take this over to my oh. channel after, after this is over. We can just talk about music all day. <laughs> yes. And then we'll break out our By instruments. By the way, both of us do have our own channels. You should go follow Cassie on uh, Twitch at Cassie View, of course, right? And yep. uh, I wasn't so lucky. I'm not just Jason Hand. I had to put the two four at the end of it. So go check those out. I haven't streamed in a while. I've been so so focused on just this this show here, which has been great. Except for when yeah, I keep I... Uh, slowing down my guests and don't let them don't let them work. Sorry about that. That's <laughs> no, good. It's all good. Yeah, I tend to stream like when I um, I'm working on a a VR project right now. Like it's a version of the classic game Snake, like a 3D VR Snake game. Um, so I tend to stream, um, when I build that out, it's kind of like my fun side project that I've been working on Excellent. on my channel. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. So I've got a few things. Data that... on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> I know the stuff I do over on mine has been way different too. What are you doing on yours lately? Uh, I haven't done anything in a long time, but it, originally uh, it was, uh, I was going through and playing around with the Azure static web apps cause that was new at that time and I was trying to learn it. Um, did some command line tips, I think, one time. I don't know, just random stuff. Kind of kicking the tires on Twitch, getting the feel cool. for the streaming stuff. So somebody asked, "What are we doing?" And that yeah. is a good question. What What, what are, are we doing? doing? <laughs> so we are um, <laughs> looking at how to uh, work with Cosmos DB and kind of starting to get like an introduction to NoSQL databases and specifically document databases using the SQL API in Cosmos DB. And if you're not familiar with Cosmos DB, um, that is an Azure service that we're going to be using. And so far, so, we've only just made a, a vague attempt at trying to understand the black magic of NoSQL. Yes. And a few, and a few other stories. <laughs> exactly. 
So, and then we're going to be going through um, this learn module here. And so what this learn module is actually going to do is we're going to go through Visual Studio Code um, and you can see how you can create stuff there uh, or create your like database and the in kind of integration with Azure. Um, and then we'll go through and work with the uh, .NET SDK to um, build a simple um, Cosmos DB or NoSQL document database. Sweet. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm like, I already created the, or the database, but if you are familiar with Azure, um, you would go in there, create resource and search for the uh, resource that you want to create and then hit create, right? Mm -hmm. So you can also do it through the Visual Studio Code um, uh, plugin as well. So if you go into like the prereqs for this, it'll have all the prereqs that you would need. Um, so after we do this, if you want, I recommend definitely going through it and, and doing it yourself because then you can kind of like, I feel like it kind of cements the information yeah. in your brain that way. Plus you get all the points. Yes, there's all the gamification. It's all gamified, yeah. I would forget that, but it's really cool. I should I should see how I'm doing. But yeah, and like, it'd be cool too. We can, uh, sometimes people do different uh, challenges within the Learn mm -hmm. platform. So like they'll have like a collection and um, then there's like sometimes prizes. It depends. Those are usually tied to like different events. But yeah, right. there's still uh, the gamification of like how many you've completed and all of that built mm -hmm. in. Um, so here's like just a little gif of how I would do it through Visual Studio Code. Um, I'm not going to do it because I already created my database um, in or not my database, my resource. Yeah. We'll create the database in the, the uh, customer's uh, collections through the. CLI, but I just want to show the, the little gift so you can see how you would do that, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to have to skip over that part. Okay. So now we need to make a directory called this Azure NoSQL. And then, I don't know. I don't know what to call it. I'm just making this up, but it sounds good to me. Maybe it should have been Azure Cosmos. That might've been better. Should I redo it? <laughs> And then we're going to be using the uh, .NET uh, console or .NET CLI to create a new console um, application. So, and I guess I should say, I hope, man, I think that's good enough to see. I have it up over here on the side so I can see if this, the, it looks good on mine, but if anybody has, uh, needs anything um, bigger for, uh, let, please do let me know. Um, so then I'm just going to go ahead and run that. And this is my uh, when my Windows um, console terminal. Mm -hmm. um, so I have different profiles, and I have it. Yeah, you uh, just have a pretty back, pretty background, pretty awesome background. Thanks. I like to That's use. Actually, uh, like, is there a picture on it? I like the coloring. There is. It's actually just like one of the like standard ones, I think. Mm. And then it will it changes. You know how like the different like standard Microsoft backgrounds or like Windows backgrounds change. Mm -hmm. And then it will change also your um, like colors of different things to match whatever the yeah. theme color is. That's right. I forgot about that. It goes well with my my pink and black theme here too. <laughs> I like it. Which matches my desk that you can't see. It's my whole desk because everything's pink and black. Problem. <laughs> Okay, so when we ran the uh, application, we got a hello world, and that's what we want. That means we were able to edit, and then we're going to copy and paste our packages. So if you're a .NET person and you're used to like using NuGet through Visual Studio, you can also use the CLI um, to add packages from NuGet. And if you don't do C# -sharp and maybe you do like Node, um, NuGet is like the package manager, like npm um, is the package manager for Node. So this is going to go through and install all my packages. But I, lo I love Windows Terminal. Like, I have so many different things just, like, set up for me. And WSL, too. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, I spend a lot of time going through different animated background images for, for Terminal. that are just, like, off to the side, just right. Mm-hmm. Like, the GIF backgrounds, like mm -hmm. that kind of stuff? Yep, exactly. I need to do that. I don't have one like that on mine. Be cool. Sometimes I think it's hard to see. I used to have one. Do I still have my cloud shell? I used to have like a cloud. Yeah, I do. <laughs> so on my cloud shell uh, one. <laughs> That's beautiful. You can see like the gif of like the clouds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the only one that I have something cool like that on though. I think all the other ones are pretty. By the way, I think I, I might have found a, a setting that um, may have fixed my left channel only issue. So no, for sweet. those listening, let me know if anything sounds different, sounds better. 
All right, so now I'm just going to do code dot to open this up in VS Code. So code is the CLI oops, for VS Code. And actually, I'm going to make that minimize that again because I'll probably want this later. Um, and then we can be in our VS Code instance. Let me make this bigger kind of reformat here. Um, so we have our program right here. That's just the hello world that we saw when we ran it. And what do we want to do next? So next we want to add an app config. So this is going to handle our connection strings for our database, which is just uh, XML. What is this saying? You are building? Yes, I do want to add them. Hmm. Oh, why my uh, coloring isn't showing up? Did I config? Yeah, I spelled it right. <laughs> Is there a message, an error message? Maybe we don't see on the stream. On the, on the stream. Oh yeah, there was one. Oh, you know what? It was probably under my graphic. Mm, there was like a little, like you don't have this extension type thing, but Got it. Um, should be fine. So I am going to actually, can we switch this so you can't see my screen while I add in the connection string information? Or I guess I could sure. just delete the resource later. Yeah. To, just go back. Like, either... okay. Just go back to this too. This... Because I'm going to now go add my endpoint in key from my resource in Azure mm -hmm. um, into my app config. Totally. Yeah. One of the other things about the live stream, sometimes it's it's hard to like make sure you don't share things uh, inadvertently. Endpoints, URLs, just random stuff. Yeah. No, it is in like a lot of times. I'll just show it, and then after the stream, I just go delete the resource. Mm -hmm. And so then, right. then you can also see what it looks like. Um, but this one I would needed to go to Azure. Okay, so we can uh, flip back now. All right, let me go back. Oops, and I, I did flip it back. There's a delay. There we go. Okay, anyways. <laughs> still showed it for a second if somebody really wants to be hey, sneaky. Well, let, for... me, let me get me out of the way here. I'm going to just switch to this other view. Okay. So the other thing that I thought was cool um, with the uh, Cosmos DB is there's actually like a .NET app that you can download that has like a bunch of uh, pre-built ways that you can interact with the SDK in the language of your choice. So you could do Node or Python or Java or whatever. So when I first did this, I was like, sweet, I'm just going to go download the app. Right now, you can't download it because I already created a database in this particular um, resource, even mm -hmm. though I deleted it, I think. But I noticed that when I had before I created a database, like right when I created the resource, there was a sample app right here that you can download. And so you can also mm -hmm. choose your language. So that part's cool because it, it always helps to see an example when oh, you're getting totally. used to a new SDK or a new way to do things, and it's just like built in. Yeah. Cool. So the other thing is you can um, access it. This is our, our um, Cosmos DB right here. So like if you're used to going into like SSMS, SQL uh, Server Management Studio, mm -hmm. um, it's now cosmos.azure.com and you can uh, look at your data there. I think, I assume there's gotta be like a downloaded version, like a client version of this as well, but I've only found so far and used the like web portal version of um, interacting with the data. Hmm. That's a good question. Maybe we should look it up. I'll... Like a yeah, native, so can... a native uh, Windows Cosmos. So you're you're saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like you know, you have your client for um, application for SSMS and for SQL to like do all your stuff. You know, create your tables and all that. But mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. one, it's like through the web portal, which is interesting. Yeah. So this is an example of what I just did. So I created my. Um, my XML and my endpoint and my key, which I just grabbed from the keys um, in the resource here. I love the like little graphic animation that it does. Switch <laughs> I know, to the it's so fancy, keys. right? Super fancy. Yeah, we adopted right. that from one of our other uh, one of the other shows on the on here on the Microsoft Developer Twitch channel. Until we get our own branding, until we get our own cool. Let's just make sure I don't break anything. Although 
yeah, we're good. So the um, other thing is that Windows or that VS Code has the terminal built in too. So mm -hmm. a lot of times I go back and forth between like my Windows terminal and the integrated one. Same. Um, whatever you prefer. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is add this uh, client, the document client. And it's not found. Why? Oh, because I didn't add my usings. That's why. I think I missed a step. Here we go. Now it should be happy. There. Okay. So now we have our document client object that we're going to use to um, interact with our database. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is add in just this basic, basic operations um, right after the main. So this is what I love about learn modules too, is like I'm lazy and I like copy and paste. So I can just be like, I'm going to grab that. And then I can look into it and be like, okay, what did I just do? Like, what did I just create? So if you take a look, you can see that we're grabbing our connection information from the app config that we just entered um, and setting that to our client. And then we are, so we're instantiating our document client with our properties. Um, we're going to create a new database called users. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the other thing, like you don't have to go in and create the database. Like you literally can just do it through the SDK, which was another thing that was like, that seems weird. Because if you come from the relational database background, it just seems a little weird. <laughs> it totally does. Um, okay, and then the document collection. So this is going to be the collection of users that we're going to create. So um, we're going to say we're going to be using the users database, and then we're going to create this web customers document collection. And then that document collection is where we'll actually create our, our users. And then and, I'm going to um, copy in, this in. In the chat, I just put the uh, link to the same um, learn module that you're doing. This is the create Azure Perfect. Cosmos DB resources and visual studio code. Is that right? Yes. Yep. Cool. So and it's part of a learning along. path. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? Part of um, the, it's also yep. part of a learning path. Yeah. It's part of the, uh, <laughs> yep. Build.net core app for Azure Cosmos DB. Exactly. All right. So we're going to run this see if I broke anything. Um, but essentially what it's going to do, so like right now, if I go here, um, here I mean, it's going to create my database and my collection. So it was successful. So now if I refresh over here, we should now see a database. We've got a few uh, comments and questions in the chat. One person says that in Azure Storage Explorer, you can work with Cosmos through there. Oh, really? I have Azure Storage Explorer. Thank you, helpful person in chat. <laughs> Grunf TNT. And another, done, uh, another one of our viewers asks, when considering to pick unstructured versus structured database databases, gosh, I can't talk today, what sort of questions should I be asking myself? Um, that is a good question. And I would, I don't know that I have a really good answer, to be honest, because like part of it's just what you're comfortable with, but like scalable, scalability is supposed to be a lot better for like NoSQL because it's globally distributed, out, like just out of the, like the Cosmos DB is globally distributed. And um, yeah. so there should be lower latency and like, there's like, I don't know, there's a lot, there's a lot of things to consider. Um, but I like this doc kind of goes into like this one, I would say read through this. And I feel like, at least for me, when I'm trying to figure out what to use for my my data stores or what, whatever I'm building, like I kind of, I would read through this doc and then I'd be like, okay, which one makes sense? Like, where do I see it going? But then sometimes it's hard because you don't really know where it's going to go. I feel like whenever you're designing an application in a database, you're like trying to be a wizard and like foresee the future, but you can't, you know, but you try to think of all these yeah. different ways where it would be able to scale the way that you need. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's like kind of a hard question to answer. Yeah, I was going to say that the same, that's also what Grumpf says, is, um, it kind of depends on the data that you're storing. You know, like what what are you working with? What problems are you trying to solve? 
I guess it's just like every other thing. It's it depends. Um, but I, but I, but I think there's a lot, there's a few big wins for Cosmos, and and a big part of it is the globally distributed part. Yeah. Um, and um, so it's more like, does that solve a problem you've got? Um, than anything, and then also considering what yeah. kind of data. That that is. But a it's good a good point. question. That's... I mean, it's. Oh, and I see the issue that I ran into, so I have to I have to delete this and recreate it. So when this gets created right now through the SDK. And this is an issue with the um, what I found with the learn module. So I didn't have this issue before, but now um, you actually need to define the partition key. And if you don't, um, it does this underscore partition key, even though it is ID. And then when you try to create a user, it'll say your partition key is wrong because our partition key, or what you can kind of think of it as your primary key is the way that I've been understanding it, yeah. um, is like how, is, is the only thing that has to be like consistent. Like you have to have your partition key. Um, so when the, the create, uh, for the actual collection is where you will do this. So right here. And so basically what I just did here is I define the partition key as ID and I need to have another using. My alt enter doesn't work in VS code. So I don't know for those people that use visual studio when the little light bulb, if it needs to like have one of those usings, you can hit alt enter and then just hit enter again. And it'll automatically add the using to the top of your uh, file. But for some reason, even though I have the extension for visual studio shortcuts in, um, this tool, it's or in VS code at some point that some of them stopped working. And I think I just have to go in cause you can map all your key bindings, like custom to whatever you want in VS code. So I need to figure out why that particular one stopped working because I really like that one. <laughs> so like when I do alt enter, it should tell me like what this, this light bulb wants. But anyway, That's so annoying. yeah, it is. And like <laughs> a lot of, you know, C sharp devs and a lot of people that do visual studio a lot, like you get really into your shortcuts, totally. like you use them oh, a yeah. lot. And so it's, yeah. All right. So I'm going to delete this again. Oops and recreate it so that we, cause I don't think I can actually change type of data. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to delete this and then we're going to run it again. So we're okay. saying here is my partition key and then, um, we're going to create it here. And so, yeah, when I create that collection, Oh, I'm like, where <laughs> this looks weird here it's because it's like supposed to be over here. It's wrapping, but not like Cardi B. <laughs> All um, right. So the other thing that I've noticed in this portal today, every time I like when I was playing with this earlier, I hit delete it like times out, but it actually works. So I'm not sure what's going on. What's up with that? So let's refresh and see if it actually. What's that? I don't, I've been saying that a lot lately, just about everything. Is it really? I didn't know. No, like when issues. something's not working, so I don't know what's up with that. 2020. <laughs> All right, let's run this again. See if it actually completed. It looks like it completed. Okay. And now let's make sure our partition key is right. So I don't know if something like changed where before it used to there. So now we have slash ID, um, not need that or default differently. Like maybe it just mm -hmm. used to default to slash ID and now it defaults to slash underscore partition key. Mm. And that's why the issue is, but, um, yeah. So either way we yeah. should be good now. Sweet. So we just created a database and a collection that is now empty Excellent. through our CLI. Just think that's so cool. Yep. That's kind of one of the, so the fun things about the, the learn modules. Like I'm sometimes I'm a little surprised by what you can actually do, like even without an Azure account. Yeah. Right. And this will actually create a sandbox environment. So you can go through this learn module from my understanding without like actually, um, creating an Azure account. Mm -hmm. All right. Which is good. Cause 
yeah. what the price of Cosmos is. Although it came way down. I know for a long time it was a, it was a little bit high, but they've they've come way down on their pricing. It has, and they even have a free level now too. Mm, yeah, that's right. Where they didn't used to have and, a free um, level. And I, I want to say I haven't done anything with it, but everybody I've talked to says that it's like plenty for just, you know, basic development, trying to understand, you know, you you get plenty of uh, space and throughput, ingress, egress, all that kind of stuff for the, just the yeah. purpose of understanding oh. what, what is this thing. Why is my highlighting not working on this? Oh, because I forgot the CS. I'm like, what did I do? go that looks better um so again we need newton soft oh i need my my shortcuts every time i have to like click and click it's just no oh. so these aren't happy because we have to create these classes still so right now i'm just going through and i'm just creating the different classes um, mm -hmm. that we're going to need to create our users so that's what i'm doing here mm -hmm. and there's like a shortcut for duplicating too but i don't know what it is That's what I was going to show you too, is that there is a calculator now. So like if you go to the, uh, yeah, I was like looking at this, uh, Cosmos DB. So capacity calculator, and then it'll like tell you how much it thinks it's going to cost. So when you're thinking about, um, what to use, that's another thing. Like we didn't even really talk about that, but that's another thing you think about when you're getting your data together, particularly if it's like a side project, like you don't, want to spend a bunch of money on something you're just playing around with. So there is a free version now for, you know, playing around with. And then also there's this like calculator. So you can see like, well, what do I expect to actually spend if I decide to spin one of these up and play with it? But if you're new to Azure, you do get the $200 credit too. So that's nice. But I haven't played. Perfect. Yeah. It is because like that's always the thing when I'm playing with new stuff. I'm like, what is um, what is it going to cost me to spin this up? Mm -hmm. When it's like your own stuff, it's like the cheaper, the better. <laughs> like when it's like your home stuff, I guess it's always probably cheaper, the better. But if it's coming from my wallet. Yeah. So I'm just kind of doing some of this busy work of creating some classes for us here. Unused. Oh, and just, I should say, well, let me create this last. Oh, wait, no, I did. This goes in the main program file. So let me put that there. And then I'll show you one thing I want to point out about um, sharp if you look at the user you'll notice these json property attributes and essentially that's when this serializes this to json it's going to use this instead of last name because obviously like in json you usually use you know lowercase and uppercase was that pascal right i always forget the pascal casing and then when you have uppercase on both which is like very more of like the standard naming convention for c sharp you want that and you want to have those like consistent throughout your different um experiences so mm -hmm. uh that's what this JSON property attribute is doing. Makes sense. The camel case wars. Camel case, yeah. And the ID wars. I actually did like a, <laughs> yeah. a poll on um, Twitter because I was like, I wonder if like there is um, like a, a preferred way like for ID, like who, if it has like, like one of them won over the other, just like in general, because I always am like uppercase I, lowercase D in C sharp, but in 
in JavaScript, I'm like lowercase both. And like, I've actually had meetings about this. Like, and I'm sure other people have been in meetings about the naming convention for ID or is it uppercase both, which I think that one just lost. Like, I don't see that anymore. Yeah. Do you see that anymore? No, I still, I, yeah. ID in general, I've just always, I don't know, felt should be capitalized, but I'm also not a developer. So I don't, I don't have these types of, these types of uh, conversations as often as you do. You don't have to fight about naming conventions. No, well, I mean you do, but not, not as much. I feel like John Calloway says I was ID for years, but coworkers finally broke me down. Now I'm I, capital lowercase d. All right. It, it, that's, it, 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 that's another it? thing too. Is it depends on where you work and and your coworkers and like the culture that's already exists someplace probably before you got there. <laughs> Yeah, and then like your legacy systems are always like I feel like more ID uppercase both. Like I think that used to be the more common way of doing it. And so it also I think depends sometimes on how long you've been a developer, what your favorite language is, and all of that kind of stuff. Like so it I just think it's funny, like only developers I feel like could talk about ID capitalization for that long. Yeah. <laughs> Search and replace, all lowercase to all uppercase. It's like <laughs> exactly. dropping a bomb. ID for life. I'm old. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Okay. So let's see here. So now we just created this create user document. So this is what we're going to uh, pass in this user that we're going to create. Um, and then we are going to uh, actually create this document in our document database. Right? So let me add this and then I'll kind of talk through what we just added. So where's my basic operation? Here it is. Um, so those are just our, our JSON represented uh, users or documents. And we're just having, why is this like this? This should be nested more. It's kind of hard to see. Let me just fix this. Usually on save, it like fixed the formatting. I don't know why it didn't save it as much there, but just to make sure it's readable for. Um, so create user document if not exist. This is what we're calling. So in our basic operation, it's going to check and see if our database exists and it's going to create it. If it doesn't, it's going to check with the collection, which those we know we, they created because we already created them. And then I'm going to create these two users. Ugh. <laughs> and they're going to have this nested information for their new his order history. Um, and then we're going to call in our create user if a uh, document doesn't exist. And so you can see here that in this, we're defining both the database and the collection that we want to use. And then we're sending in um, that JSON object. So here. Um, you can see that it's going to check and see if it exists. And then if it doesn't, it's going to add it. And then it's sending in that partition key. Great. So did I save everything? Let's see. I haven't broke anything yet. Did I break something? Created the user. Boom. I created the second user. Created user Yay. one. Okay. So now we've created both of our users. So if we go back and take a look at our uh, document database over here, we should be able to see them. Mashiko777 wants to know, does your teams still use SQL? Yeah, I mean, there's teams use all, you mean like as in Microsoft? Like is teams as in the teams at Microsoft or as in teams team? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Word teams means a lot around here. Um, I'm guessing yeah, just uh, development teams. Oh, the, team, use... the teams that you work on or any of us really. Yeah. Like, well, in cloud advocacy, a lot of times we're creating kind of like different uh, demo stuff and things like that. So you can kind of use what you want to use. Um, and I do a lot more like AI stuff. So like I build a lot more at Microsoft um, machine learning models, which I'm not really, I'm uh, interacting with databases, but I'm not necessarily setting them up for like an application development thing. I don't know. What about you, Jason? Yeah. Um, I haven't used SQL forever. 
not not for any particular reason <clears throat> other than um just a lot of the databases and stuff that i've been working on are so small and easy to i don't know like it just hasn't been a use case for most of the stuff I, i've been working on but it's still alive and well and doing really you know pretty well it's nice to be part of the portfolio within azure that you can spin yeah. it up there's a whole managed sql um thing so yeah i i haven't i haven't used it in a long time and in fact it's kind of sad um i don't even know if i could write like a good sql query right now because I'll, i shouldn't say that because kql custo query language i have to do a lot with that still and they're very they're very similar have you played around with custo mm -mm, i yeah. don't know much about it what is it it's the it's how you query like logs and and you know system infrastructure stuff mm, okay um within azure monitor within log analytics uh all of the different things that um you know, you're available to you within there. KQL okay, I've used the it then. Yeah. It's you called KQL? It. Yeah, it's short for Custo query language. Okay. Custo is in the Jacques Custo. Well, like that. Did I do that right? Spelled differently. Oh. K U. Yeah, no, that's right. K U S Custo query language. Or query, yeah. See, like, I oh, love data. Nice. There's so many things about data and using data and accessing data. Like, you could just talk about it forever. <laughs> and there's always more to learn about it. Yeah. So I've key, used this once. Key query language here. But Custo is, maybe that's more of an internal term as far as Custo goes. But yeah, okay. KQL and, and SQL aren't too, too different. But it has been a long time since I've, I've messed around inside of SQL. Honestly, it was for me, too. Like, because I hadn't, I hadn't, um... I think once I started like doing more open source things and like MySQL, you could spin up and tear down and free and it's open source. And it was just at that point, I, I had less use cases, but that was also because I wasn't working inside of the business anymore. Yeah, I think it depends. When I was doing like full stack um, .NET development, it was always SQL. And then I, one of the projects I was using was using Entity Framework. And so when you do Entity Framework, you actually don't write, you do it all in link. So you're, then you're not even writing your SQL, which hmm. like I like, I really like SQL and I liked writing it. So I, pre I prefer Dapper um, when I was okay. doing uh, development, but I don't know. I go back and forth where like sometimes I really like Entity Framework and then sometimes I'm like, let's just straight write ADO. And uh, mm -hmm. which when we get to the querying part of this, um, you can just write your SQL queries right in with your, with the SDK, which I thought was cool, which reminded me more of Dapper. If we have any C sharp people on here and they've used, um, Dapper before. So we've also got the question, do we know anything plus one for Dapper? Um, but we, <laughs> do we know anything about, um, partial document updates? Uh, I don't know anything about this, but I was just about to uh, pull up the API docs for Cosmos see what it might say in there there is so do you mean like when you just need to update a property on the document like a, a user document is that what they mean um let's see is that Who is was that? that was like, Grumpf, tnt yes yeah so the replace which was confusing to me because i thought it would be like replacing the full record but from my understanding when i was looking at this earlier replace would be um because now you have the update whole document yeah, so I think you actually can, hang on, I think that's on the next step. Let's go back to that because, Okay. well, or hang on, do I have that up? No, that's the pre, this is one of those things where we can learn together. Exactly. Did you find a good doc on it? I just have, I have the, I put it in chat. It's the Azure Cosmos DB REST API reference, which I don't think that's. Yes, that's fair. exact. That's, Is that what you're looking for? Oh, okay. I think so, because I think in there, it's going to give us like all the different calls that you can make um, through the SDK. Yeah. Uh, well, no, maybe that's still not. Let's get place. There was a thought, a link in here. Okay, I'm going to have to come back. <laughs> I thought up here there was like here this is what I was thinking of so like in here like so there I think it's replace is what we want and if you go in here this has what it does so replace document async
the updated document to replace the existing resource. So that I don't think is right. I wonder if it's upstart. Reading ducks together. <laughs> I'm trying to think, of, I'm trying to think of a clever name for Upsert as a startup like business that uses Upsert in the name. Actually, just the name Upsert sounds like a sounds like a startup. It does just on its own, and it can be like whatever you want it to be. I, although it would be cool if it was like some sort of data, like data startup. I feel like <laughs> the boring we, we part. We only of we only upload to the cloud. You can't have it back. So I don't know if I'm still clear on this now that I'm reading through this. Like I would mm -hmm. think upsert would be like an update or an insert. Like that's what it sounds like to me. Like I'm either going to update the record or insert the record. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But I thought when I was reading about this, because I had the same thought that like replace, I thought when the more I read about like replace um, document, uh -huh. But like it would also update a property and you could like specify the property in the ID and it wouldn't like it's not like gonna wipe out the existing document was my understanding when I read about it before. Okay. okay. Replace a document. This is the same spot as no wait, this is different, isn't it? Ship sheep says it sounds like Oh now I'm in Java. <gasps> hmm? Or is it just the Java AP or SDK documentation? Yeah, I, I think that's what it is. I would say maybe confirm. Do we have in the learn module? Are we going to do that? So we've created. And then next we're going to read, read from it. And then replace. But the thing about replace is I don't think it's replacing the whole document. Yeah. But then how would you delete a property? Like you can delete a record. So it, to me, it would make sense if it was re replacing the whole one. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. We might have to look that up later. So we'll good. update a user record to account for a change in their last name. So I think when you do this, like if you see. I mean, but is it a here, complete replacing of the whole document? Like maybe you have to get the full document and then update the property and then. So replace document, database name, collection name, the user ID. So this is that partition thing. And then updated user. Oh, no, there's the partition key. So that's the user ID. Yeah. Oh, so I think that, well, let's wait till we get to that so I can like dig in. Cause like sometimes it's hard. To, I like want to click yeah. on things and I can't oh. because I'm in the docs. So we'll play with that more when we get to that particular part. Um, but maybe some, oh, there's a way to just update a property versus replacing the document. Or maybe it just best practice with document is to grab the full thing and replace the full thing. Could be if it's the only way for now. Doesn't sound very efficient. It is, it doesn't, but then at the same time, like document retrieve, like it's so much faster because the, op like, I worked on this one database that was so large, like there was like so many joins. And so like a query just to like get your object that you needed would take forever because it was just like all the joins and it was so complex. Right. But like with document DB, like it's all one. So like, does it even really matter if you're grabbing the full document yeah. versus just updating the, like the, the, like grabbing it and updating the one property? Like I almost wonder if it's not even like an yeah. issue once you get to this, because it's again, it's that whole like, Try, still thinking relational, exactly. like a relational <laughs> database, but like it's not. So it's yeah. Stop, stop forcing it to be a relational database. <laughs> Let it be what it wants. <laughs> uh, okay, it's a free spirit. That's what I'm exactly. learning. About stop, <laughs> stop putting it in a box. Yeah, you can't can't put document DB in a corner. <laughs> Just wants to shine. Okay, so read documents. Where are we putting this? We are putting this after write console. Okay. So we 
Mm -hmm. Mashika, we think it sounds complicated too, but I think we think, I think we're realizing we're overthinking it. Yeah, I think we are. Like, I think that with an, an, a replace, like, I think part of the operation is to get the full object and replace it with the updated property. And that's, that is an update mm -hmm. is kind of what I'm thinking um, from what I read. But like I said, yeah. fact check me. We have our own idea of cred that's been burned into our brains. Right. All right, so now we are going to read the user and then we're gonna run, okay. I feel like this needs to be bigger. And uh, we have, just as a time check, we got about 30 minutes left, so plenty. Okay. But we wanted to update you. Yeah, I think that we will, we might not get through like everything, but I think even just now, like if this was your first experience with document database, I feel like you would have, or, or with Cosmos DB and NoSQL and that kind of stuff. Like, I feel like we've, we've passed a lot of the first barriers and broken our thinking to rebuild it, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we do in, in tech. We just build things to, or break things to rebuild them differently. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, Mashika was asking about Cascade. Um, I'm guessing maybe ca the Cascade database, but I don't know much about that. Is that an Oracle? Yeah. Team? You have to tell us more, Mashika. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying. I'm looking at the chat here to try to see what he an update on Cascade. Oh, I think he means like a cascading event. Mm. Like like a, uh, I remember something like this. No, it's a query in SQL. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cascading. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So now this is just going to read. So then we're saying we want this database, um, this uh, collection, and this user. And that will go into read document. Um, and then creating our URI, passing in those properties. And then it's going to write out the user ID. So if we go back here too. I was playing with some of the querying. So like the first time I tried to do this, like because it's a string, if you do like ID one, you get nothing because it started a string. Uh oh. Do we break something? We have an error. Oh boy. Now it's gonna get exciting. <laughs> so let's see. Oh, it's trying to create an ID and it already exists. Mm -hmm. So why is our create if not exists not working? Isn't that what that method is? Is it create if not exists or does it try to create it every time? Or did I miss? Hold up. Um, Let me go back here. So we didn't do, did it, is there supposed to be a delete? No. Okay. So we did that. We ran it. The read document, read user. But yeah, so basically, it looks like if I just comment out the create, it should be fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so, or yeah, the, the ID is not hard coded somewhere, is it? So it's create if not exist. Um, it is hard coded like right here, but basically like if it tries to create this user, it should check if the user exists before it tries to create it. So is my check to see if it's existing? Is that not working? We've got a question from oh. ship Shoop that says, are there transactions in Cosmos DB? Tell us more what you mean by that. What kind of transaction? Like a query transaction or what kind of transaction? How much the Cardi B song? But all the Cardi B song. <laughs> <laughs> During the silence. 
But we can yeah, like that's we can. We, that's what we need right now is Cardi B. Ship ship. If you've got more, you can share with us. Uh, put that in chat. Otherwise, um, what, are you going to just think, cut that cut that code I out? Think he's, I think he's talking about like transact SQL, where like you just you have your transaction here. Like I'm not sure if that's what you mean, but like there are stored procedures and like there's triggers and like that was the thing that I was curious about too is that you can actually do like a lot of those SQL esque things within mm -hmm. it. Like I'm trying to see if I can find the docs where I found all those uh, concepts. So is it here? So I think that's what you mean. I don't know if you want to add anything additional, but if that's what you're thinking about, like just transactional querying, then yes. And you can still have your store procedures and call that. Oh, like a rolled back transit. I see. Okay, now I know what you're talking about. Um, mm. Now I know what you're talking about, but I don't know that you can do that. Like, which I used that a lot when I was working with complex. So it's like where you create a transaction and then you can decide if you want to commit it or not. Is that what um, he's talking about? So like if I do a query to like delete or change something and if I do it wrong and it's going to screw up the database and it's bad, I want to be able to roll that back. And mm -hmm. that is a really good question. What is that just called a transaction in general or a type of transaction? Yeah. Yeah, it's like the keyword that you would use in SQL is like transact and then right, right, right. then you'd like commit, if I remember right. It's been a long time since I used yeah. one of those, so <laughs> it took me a minute. Uh, but yeah, so I'm looking over here to see if there's anything in here. Like, maybe I should look up like rollback. Actually, that's why. How to revert a rollback and update. It's always on Stack Overflow. Yeah, how do people live without this? <laughs> I, know. I believe the how answer is no. Is what this person... <laughs> that's kind of scary. Like, there's no way to roll back. Scope to a single partition in a single container, meaning you cannot update the document in different containers or even different partitions within the same container as part of a single transaction. But I wonder if this is something like you're not like that's what actually brings up another question. Like if I want to update like a bunch of records, like where all the things that I've played with with like Cosmos now is like I'm just updating like one record. But like when you're doing SQL and you have large databases, you definitely do things where you're like. Yeah. updating the full or at the very least you'd like to see what the results of that would be before you mm -hmm. make it happen yeah, yeah. and um methods. yeah it, it looks like the answer is no which is like another one of those things that's like feels so wrong when you come from <laughs> equal background <laughs> So um, we'll have to do like a follow up to one of these in like two or three months. Like once I, <laughs> I just saw the chat, they said YOLO. Oh my gosh, it is. This is the YOLO database. Like, don't screw it up. <laughs> you can't. Maybe that's the whole thing. You can't. <laughs> you can't screw it up. Oh man. It's kind of yeah. Like, no, I think I, it, okay. I just think of it like it, it, it's how I treat my garage sometimes. Just throw it in the garage. I'll deal with it later. Like that could be. I don't know, all kinds of just camping gear, junk, whatever, empty Amazon boxes. Mm -hmm. The other thing is like, if you just think about like the, like it, it is, it's like you just throw the gear in and just get it when you need it. Like, but I know they have big systems on it. So there has to be ways to do like, um, like backups. I mean, I'm sure there like, there's ways to make sure that your data is like safe and secure. Like it's probably just different than the way that we would do it in a transactional way. But I, was, I think we should do like a follow up on this in like three months once I've like <laughs> what fully, like I've just started getting my feet wet. So these are like really good questions that I'm like, haven't thought about that yet. Yeah. Okay. But it's, yeah. But just, just like other about things. You, like, but I'm not going anywhere. I, we can make this happen. I think. You're what? I said, I'm not going anywhere. I think we can, we can probably make this happen. Do another live stream. Yeah. 
And maybe we could even tap someone on the team they'd want to come since they would be. Yeah. Yeah. I can think of a few people. That would be kind of fun. Okay. So I think the reason is that my get is not finding the entity or I'm sorry, the document. And when it's coming back, it's trying to then create it. And it's saying this ID already exists. So I think that in my, my read, um, like, because I'm lazy, instead of trying to fix that, I'm just going to comment out the create because we've already created our users. Um, and then I think this will be, this will work. Create user document if not exist. And that too. And then I think if we run it over. Suspense. Suspense. User one. Yes. Not yeah. read. So I wonder if when I changed how this is created. Okay, so have we gone into the storage explorer to look to see what's in there? I have it open, but I'm like, I don't know. Like, where is it? Yeah. <laughs> or even that, what about in the browser? Does oh, I bet it's in here because this is the subscription that I'm under. So maybe there's like a Cosmos thing in it. There is. There's definitely a Cosmos there. And then I can see, oh, that's cool. Okay, this is exactly, exactly what I was thinking. Oh, and here you can see stored procedures and triggers and user-defined functions. So those are very, like if you're SQL, like that's right. all like I know that, that feels stuff. Familiar, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then so inside that, documents, does it show anything? Yeah. So we can see. Okay, so it is putting a few records in there. Hmm. Yeah. So it created the records, and I think or, what the issue is it's looking for. I think the read is reading on maybe the wrong ID. I say records. I, I don't even think that's the right term, is it? Documents. Yeah. <laughs> so like each one of these, see even new document, you could add one, like you could just add one that's like three and like save it. Like we just created one. Mm -hmm. Like that's cool. It's not a record. This is cool. So this is how you, this would be like, it's still like, can you query in here though? Or can I just like click through? There's a filter. Oh, you can. So if I do like C dot ID equals like one. How do I run it? Did I just hit enter? I don't know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> Does it, how do I run it then? Apply? Probably. Hmm. Okay. Did I do something? apply nothing and see if they all yeah okay so I did something wrong isn't it c.id oh I forgot the where the where is not part of it see if you have this is why it has the helper text c.id equals oops I know someone's over there like double yep. quotes instead of single yeah and they point out you have to have the where yeah there we go oh they did okay I was like thinking that that was part of the like, because right. I didn't have to write select from either, but I mean, it makes sense that they want to add the where because you might not be starting with where, you might be starting with something else. So. Yeah. Okay, join, okay. That's cool. So you can query. Excellent, okay. Excellent. I was All just right. curious. Yeah. Because I, I, cause we can see it for sure in the browser, right? We haven't been over there in a while, but. Yeah, so yeah. like the same kind of UI here where you can write your query and run it yeah. and navigate here. So yeah, that's cool that it has that option. So like I had only been using this, so now I know that it's in, um, mm -hmm. in the Storage Explorer too. That's cool. I wonder, can you like favorite it? Like you can favorite the other stuff? 
Or can I, what do I have? Cause right now I have like storage accounts favorited and I really like that. Cause then there's like a lot in here and I don't have to go like, look for it. Can I add to quick access? Cool. So now it's just right here when I log in. Very cool. Look at that. Love it. Actually, I want to click on the stored procedure thing too. It's like create stored procedure. What is this experience like? Is this going to give me an editor? Sweet. So it gets the collection. Very cool. Nifty. It looks so like not a, new, every... a new version too. There at the top in the banner. I know I need to update, but I don't want to do it no, while no. we're streaming. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been in. We've the only got uh, like 13 minutes there. Okay. Well, maybe we should figure out what's up with this. So in the read user. I wonder if it's because it's using user ID. I didn't I set like ID as the partition key, not the user ID. So maybe that's an issue. Let's try that. Grump says if you use the up, uh, what, what's it called? How does it go? Up, upper, upsert upsert. item. Upsert. Yeah. Then you don't have to, or it doesn't check, doesn't have to check if it exists. And that worked, so that's why um, the copy and pasted code had the partition key as the user ID mm -hmm. um, instead of the ID, and so that's also why it couldn't find it when it. So like in the find user mm -hmm. update mm -hmm. um, or create if doesn't exist, that would be why we got our error because it was looking for the wrong key. Yeah, that makes sense. So I wonder if when I changed the partition key, if it wanted me to use the user ID, but the user ID I thought is like a, a, like a user string name. And it's like, why would I use that as my ID? Yeah, like the user ID is the like, um, like a username almost. So I don't know why, but I mean, you can make the partition key anything you want. All right. Because it's the YOLO database. <laughs> <laughs> That's like what it's going to be called in my head now. I love it. Okay, so we just read a user document. Cool. Now let's play with this replace. Ooh, we're to the replace part. Or what we were talking about earlier. So on to after read. And then we're going to update it. So let's take a look at this now that we can see. So replace document, we send in the database, the, oops, the collection name, the user ID, the partition key, which we changed to ID. And then, so I wonder if in this like operation, it gets that because at no point when we do a replace, do we have to like actually call, get the object, update the property and then write it. Like when you're thinking about SQL, that's kind of how you would think about it sometimes. Like if mm -hmm. you're going to, but this, it's like, I'm just replacing and here's what I want. I'm, I'm sending in the ID and then I'll with the user object with the updated user object. And it's not going to replace everything. It's only going to update the last name when we run this, which we'll see, I'll run it. So we're going to update the last name to this. Okay. Yeah. So I think it's just part of the replace. It is like an update. Yeah. But you don't have to think about like grabbing and, um, yeah. Grump says upsert basically does insert if it doesn't exist or update if it does. Okay. And that, that makes sense. Like reading it. I love a name like that. That's like so descriptive and like, <laughs> I would think this is what that means. Like it's a good you don't even, yeah. Thank you for confirming that. <laughs> Okay, so this dot create user document if not exist. Okay, so let's go to my basic operation. And comment. 
I guess, I mean, we could still read it, but well, I guess, yeah, we can read the before and after output. Mm -hmm. um, so let's read it before and after. Although I believe this is only logging the ID. Um, it was last name that was changed, right? This is the right syntax. It's been a little while since I've. All right. I think I did everything. Let's run it and see what I broke. Yellow C sharp for yellow DB. Yellow C sharp. Yeah, yeah, you have to do yellow C sharp because it's a yellow database. It's the only <laughs> exactly. way. That's how they understand each other. All right, Ship, so Ship Shoop TV. says, I think upsert came from Oracle, where the same concept in Microsoft SQL is the merge operation. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right, so it worked. Um, so we had this was the original last name, and then we did the replace for this last name, and then it read and wrote it out again. And so Beautiful. that's it. And now, so if we go back to um, our query here. We should see, see, we still have the full document, but mm -hmm. then the last name was updated. Yeah. So replaces like an update and you don't have to worry about like getting the object. So I think if you actually want to like wipe it out, you would like delete it and add a new one. Like if you wanted to, like, cause like what if I wanted to remove the shipping preferences? I mean, I don't know why you would want to, but like, I'm guessing you'd have to. Oh, if it's not, yeah, like, I see. Like get it, delete it, add it. Right. Or maybe if you do an upsert, actually no, it sounds like you could probably do an upsert removing if the, this record or this part of the record. It just takes out that whole section. I would think if you did an upsert, it would. Now with a replace, I don't think it would because replace is just like. Well, we've got uh, six minutes. Can you okay. Make, try it out. Doing an upsert. Should we go just like straight to that? Should we skip delete? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, you're right. Maybe you, I don't want to derail you here in the last few minutes. No, it's okay. The only thing that I just like, we totally could, um, is I wanted to show this part because I love this part because it reminds me of Dapper. Oh, yeah, okay. And so, like, I know someone else in there was, like, Dapper++. Mm -hmm. And so, like, if you go into, like, adding queries and link queries, you can actually do that with Cosmos, too, which, is again, is something that's, like, really yeah. comfortable. Right, right. Um, so, if we want to just do this simple query one, I think that would be cool. And then... If we have time, we can go, let's go, we'll go to the docs and maybe we could do like an upsert okay. too and kind of play around with that. We'll see. Back to a simpler time. Sorry, I was looking at the chat. <laughs> oh, I just want to post it back. Okay. Um, I don't think I missed anything. Let me, let me just go back quick and make sure I didn't miss anything else that we need to do. I don't think so. Oh yeah, no, we just get to delete. That's all, which is fine. We don't need to delete our users. They get to exist. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's cool. Totally delete the Cosmos resource. Yeah, until right after this. So they get to exist you know, for like another, <laughs> for another 10 minutes. minutes or so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to execute non query. Which I guess I can just... We're just not going to talk about that this is all going in the program CS. We're just not going to talk about that part. I'm just going to go with it. Best practices. <laughs> exactly. Best practices when learning. <laughs> you write it bad first and then you fix it later. Okay. So we want to call this then in our basic operation. You don't have to fix it until the security team sees it. <laughs> Exactly. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this and this and this because we just want to read from our database and our collection. We go in here, see if I need to change anything. Try 
for setting query options. So here's a link query, it looks like. So it's a user query. And then you're just being able to do where last name equals this using link. So that will be the first one that runs and then it will print it out. And then it's going to also look at how you can do that with um, a SQL statement, with transact SQL. User query, and then it will list them all out. So I think, does this user still exist? I think that was the user too. Let's just make sure so we actually get a result. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's just going to read it out. So let's see. I don't see any partition key because it's going by last name. So we shouldn't have that issue on this one. So red user one. That's not what it's supposed to, it's supposed to print out the user, isn't it? Oh, I need to press an AT. Okay, so running link query, cool. And then SQL query, and this is our result. Mm. It's nice that you have the option yeah. too, like to choose which way you want to query the database. Totally. Like if you're someone that likes link and hates writing SQL, like mm -hmm. you can do that. And if you're someone that prefers SQL, then you can do that too. Because YOLO, as you can do. <laughs> YOLO DB. <laughs> we got to talk to marketing about this. I think this is a good... Good one. Okay, let's look at it like an upsert example. Um, I don't think there's any in this one. I think this goes into like stored procedures, um, which I don't think they're really any, like I think that concept's the same. Like I don't think there's anything different there. Um, so let's go back to, where was the one that had like the nice setup of all the Although we have three minutes, do we need to do any sort of like? Oh uh, yeah, uh, we probably ought to start wrapping up here. Okay. So, um, yeah, actually, I'll just bring it back to the two of us, and um, we're definitely going to have to. We we already knew this going in. Uh, schedule some more in the future. But yeah. um, what else should uh, should we know about what you got going on, and just think life in general as we as we say goodbye here. Uh, let's see. So um, you can follow me on my Twitch channel if you want um, to, which is at Cassie View, Twitch TV slash Cassie View. Um, and there I do more, um, I'm doing a lot of like TypeScript and JavaScript and web VR stuff, like I was saying earlier. Um, I also do some AI stuff there as well. I actually don't do a ton of data stuff, but I might actually, because I want to play with this upsert thing. And because there's like some really good questions in here that like, I'm curious of like, what is that, that result? I might play with this a little bit more on my stream. So if you follow yeah. my ch channel, um, then maybe we can play with this a bit more, but yeah, I guess, I don't know what else I have going on. I have some talks coming up follow, and follow you yeah. on Twitter and Twitch. And that's, that's kind of where we're hanging out mostly these days. Yeah, so. definitely. And then, uh, funny. here in, is it not next week, but the week after, I think, or coming up pretty soon, we'll do another live stream together, um, where we are going to play with some AI. And um, Cassie and I are both uh, aspiring um, hacks on the musician front, I would say, and but yes. enjoy enjoy talking and, and um, conversing over all things music related. So um, we thought we'd mix that in with a little AI and uh, yeah, still kick around the details, but tune in for that. That should be fun. And uh, what's that? Oh, I just said on the 20th, right? Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, that sounds right. I think so. I think okay. it's the 20th. That sounds right. So, yeah, come back here um, on the 20th, and we'll same place, same time. And uh, with that, thank you so much, Cassie. This has been fun. Yeah. Uh, way to spend thank the you. afternoon. And we will definitely do it again real, real soon. Thank you to all, everybody on yes. the stream, everybody in chat. This has been a real fun conversation and great questions. And, yeah, um, yeah we'll see you again real soon. So thank you mm -hmm. all, and enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you later. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for the help in the chat too, guys.